Hey Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So people always ask me, what 3D printers do I use? So I use two 3D printers. The first one is this Epax X1. There's a new end version that has a parallel light. And it, it's a little spendy, but this makes really high quality resolution uh, prints using uh, resin. Now it's kind of cool, the way it works is it actually has a light inside of it. And this UV light hardens the resin instantly. And you can kind of see here the pictures of it. I have the one that has the yellow um, glass so I can see inside. And I did that purposely so I could do like videos and stuff and that's why I have it. Now they have the spec sheets on here and everything else on Amazon, but this is a really cool printer and I'll kind of show you guys some of the stuff I made with this. Now the new version is even better than mine because it does have the parallel lights already installed, which is the latest version. They do have a higher res screen you can get, but at this point I don't think it's quite necessary, but if you got a bigger model, you might need that as well. So here's the interface that you use in order to create your 3D objects or to print them. The square represents the size of the base of how big it can print. And this is one of the cringer heads that I was working on for my customs you can see here. And I wanted to print two of them. So first I have to add what's known as supports. And these supports make it so that um, there is a connection to the metal plate as it prints. Let me go and add a second cringer head by cloning this one so I can print two at once. Now when it comes to resin printers, it doesn't matter how many objects you have on there, it depends how tall they are for how long it takes to print. So having five objects all the same size, it takes just as long to print as it does one. Now it's going to print it upside down just like this, and it's going to start from the base of the metal on the way down, so you can kind of simulate it, kind of like that's how it's going to look when it prints, one little piece at a time. So let me go ahead and show you guys what the actual printer looks like. I have it set up in my house where you can see how it's going to look as it prints and it's going to take hours to do this so it's kind of crazy how long it takes to actually do it as it is each layer at a time almost like apples being sliced all right so here is the actual printer right here that i have and i have a thermometer and um gauge next to it so i can check the temperature and it's the epax 3d and then i also have a humidity checker too so here's the screen when you turn it on you can kind of see epax and then uh um, there's the interface, you'd click print, and then you'd go and you'd find your actual objects you're going to print, and then you'd go ahead and start the print job. So you can see here, I'm just going down and selecting them. We can see some of the stuff I've already printed. And after we get to here, let me show you guys what something that's printed on here already looks like. So let's go ahead and uh, see there's the cringer heads I just printed. And I already have them in here. So there they are right there. You can see them hanging upside down. I use clear blue resin to print them. And those are my cringer heads hanging upside down, waiting to be removed from the resin. And it's really cool. Let me go and show you something. This is the largest thing I've ever printed on my printer. And it is the slime pit extension piece. And you can see it here in time lapse printing. This thing actually took like 17 hours to print. So it's not nearly that quick. It'd be cool if it was that quick. And there it is. And here's how it looks after it's painted. And then here's what it looks like when it's installed. So there it is installed to make the slime pit taller for the classics figure. Now my wife said, hey, can you make this hummingbird for me? So I went online, found a model of a hummingbird. It costs like three bucks or something. And there it is printed. It looks so cool. Again, in the blue, blue clear. Now the other printer I use is the Artillery Sidewinder SWX1 3D printer. And this thing is awesome. It's huge. And again, I got mine on Amazon. And uh, let me show you a quick build of me actually building this thing. So here I got my box in the mail, so excited. And uh, rip it open, and I cannot believe the directions to this is, is a lot longer than you think. And if you do it wrong, it's not going to work right. So you got to get all the parts out. You got to put on the main frame on top. You got to put in um, these uh, hex fasteners to uh, hold it together. Then you have to put the spool on top in order to hold your... Uh, your, your filament you can see there's a filament there and it's really cool because it has like a sensor to make sure you don't run out of filament in the middle of your printing then you got to readjust all the wheels on them so it's loose you got to plug in all the wires and once you get it all plugged in and ready to go then you have your beautiful machine almost ready and there it is all set up in my garage look at that it is 
huge and monstrous so cool let's go ahead and turn it on so you guys can see what it looks like now not only do you have to set this up you also have to calibrate that and i'll show you how to calibrate it in a minute there's the on switch and you can see there's the interface turning on but uh all kinds of cool tools to preheat it you just hit print then of course you just like the other interface you choose your print you're going to print and you go ahead and print it there's all my parts for the dungeon that you guys see me do before and then you just uh and click it and print it and then you're ready to go so here's how you uh, calibrate it is uh i'll do it in fast motion here you take a piece of paper and there's five different positions you check on each position the paper should be able to pull out and slide a little bit if it's too hard to slide it's not done after you calibrate it you then have to feed the um, filament into it so you just slide that in there and then it just kind of sucks in now it's always good to do a test print this printer comes with a little cube and you just print the cube and I'm not going to make you guys watch the whole entire thing print so I have it on fast motion for you you can see that cube printing and it's just a good way to tell to make sure you got your printer set up right and you didn't get a dud I actually had to get two of these the first one I got the motherboard went out and it stopped heating and so I ended up getting a second one this is the interface right here you can see me loading the, the dungeon body into the interface and it takes the whole entire bed up the, the model has to be inside of the gray area and the shaded squares have to be no model at all in there. So you can see this thing takes up the whole entire print bed. And here it is printing in fast motion. This thing took uh, um, two and a half, no, three, yeah, three and a half days to print. So it wasn't just a simple little, you know, half hour project. It took a full spool of plastic also to print it too. So this thing was massively huge and it just took forever. And, uh, Use like I said, a whole spool of, of plastic filament. And there it is. Ta-da! And of course you gotta yank it off there, which is pretty hard to do sometimes. It takes quite a lot of effort to get it off without destroying it. So there it is completed. There's He-Man standing inside there in the jail cell. And uh, there it is. All right, like, subscribe, tell your friends. See you guys next video.